Starship is ready, and so are we. The giant bird can soar into the sky at any moment now. However, there is still a thread holding it back, and that is the FAA. While recent updates seemed to create an opportunity for Starship to launch in September, the FAA's latest announcement stated that a license for Starship could only be issued in October at the earliest. This has caused quite a bit of disappointment in the space exploration industry. Let's take a closer look together at this story in today's episode of Alpha Tech. The United States Federal Aviation Administration has officially announced that the assessment will only be completed in October of corrective actions that Elon Musk's SpaceX has taken following its Starship explosion, the agency's acting administrator said on Wednesday. The agency itself can't issue a license for Space Exploration Technologies Incorporated to resume test flights of its colossal rocket until its review is done, Deputy Secretary of Transportation Polly Trottenberg told reporters on the sidelines of an aerospace summit in Washington. We are optimistic sometime next month, Trottenberg said. Next month is for our part to be done. We are optimistic we'll be through the checklist of items on the commercial space side from the FAA at the end of next month. Trottenberg also added that SpaceX still needs separate environmental approval from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service before launching, with an unspecified time frame for when that might occur. This is disappointing news for Rock rocket enthusiasts eagerly awaiting Starship's flight this month. With the FAA's past delays concerning Starship, there is some concern that the Starship schedule may be pushed to October or beyond. However, regardless of the outcome, let's remain patient and calm. The Starship program will never come to a halt. Though we may have to wait for IFT-2, this also means that the gap between IFT-2 and IFT-3 and beyond will be shorter. Both boosters and ships are continuously under construction, and Raptor 3 is getting closer each day. The Megabay and the new Star Factory are in development, and the production of new rockets will be much faster when they are ready. The FAA last week concluded a technical investigation into SpaceX's April test launch of its Starship rocket, saying the company must implement dozens of corrective measures. The FAA cited multiple root causes of the Starship failure and 63 corrective actions to take before launching the rocket again including hardware changes to prevent leaks and fires and reinforcing the rocket's launch pad to prevent a storm of kicked up debris and sand. In response to this announcement, Musk's space company led the Starship investigation and largely created the list of 63 corrective actions for the FAA to approve. Those 63 corrective actions outlined in the report are categorized into 14 sections, with four of them specifically addressing booster-related issues. Notably, 24 changes changes are associated with the Raptor engines, while 25 are related to the Super Heavy Booster, and 12 additional actions are dedicated to improvements in the launch pad and tank farm infrastructure. To ensure safety, SpaceX has taken measures such as enhancing the fire suppression system, C2, by increasing its capacity by 15 times. Furthermore, SpaceX technicians have reinforced protective measures between the engines and introduced control systems for monitoring potential propellant leaks. Musk had previously mentioned that the protections on Booster 7 were adaptations from those intended for the next prototype and were not optimized for this specific Super Heavy Booster, leading to inefficiencies during problem occurrences. In the event of a fire, SpaceX has also significantly upgraded the flame suppression system's capacity, increasing it by 15 times. The report emphasizes various safety procedures and component design enhancements involving the use of additional prototypes for testing. SpaceX has successfully completed 57 out of the 63 recommended actions, with the remaining six set to be implemented during the third launch. These actions pertain to components that cannot be replaced on the current prototypes. The closure of the FAA Pro puts SpaceX one step closer to getting Starship in space for the first time, a major long-sought testing milestone before the company can use the reusable rocket for commercial satellite missions and human landings on the moon for NASA. SpaceX must obtain a modified FAA license to launch, which entails a sometimes lengthy review 
view of Starship's flight trajectory, accident probabilities, and other factors affecting nearby public safety. In fact, concerns about approval from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service are not a major obstacle for SpaceX. The investigation and findings by this organization will also help SpaceX avoid many environmental hurdles, such as lawsuits from nonprofit environmental groups that have not yet progressed for a long time. In April, U.S. wildlife officials visited the site of a SpaceX rocket that exploded shortly after takeoff and took in the damage. The biggest impact was debris from the launch pad that was damaged by the thrust of the Super Heavy booster. No debris was found on lands belonging to the refuge itself, but the agency said debris was spread out over 385 acres belonging to SpaceX and Boca Chica State Park. Of course, there was no evidence that the launch and debris it created harmed wildlife. At this time, no dead birds or wildlife have been found on refuge-owned or managed lands, the HSC said. That's why we can see that the first launch of Starship, while causing significant damage to the launch pad itself, had relatively minor environmental impacts on the surrounding area. Furthermore, immediately after launch, SpaceX initiated repairs and upgrades to the launch pad at Starbase to minimize the effects of the Raptor engine's power during liftoff. The launch pad lacked a flame deflector, or water deluge system, which most pads are built with. One obvious answer here is the fact that at Boca Chica, the water table is only a few meters below ground level. And if SpaceX wanted to create a flame trench, then they would have to build an artificial hill to accommodate it. But SpaceX doesn't have the time and money that NASA has access to, and everything that they do is an expression of the limited supply of either of these resources. SpaceX also works under Musk's mantra of the best part is no part, and in a lot of situations, they will deliberately delete something that is conventionally regarded as essential, just to see if they can get away with it. As Musk has said, if you're not having to go back and reinstate about 20% of the things you're deleted, then you're not deleting enough. However, the inability to dig an effective flame trench isn't the end of Stage 0 for Boca Chica. Instead, they have constructed a technical structure that's even better at diffusing sound, flames, and energy produced by the launch. This structure includes cooling plates at a water deluge system. In fact, according to some reports, a simple flat plate is more effective than most shapes, including flat slopes or conical shapes. If you have a sufficiently elevated launch mount, you don't need a flame trench, at least in terms of protecting the vehicle. An elevated launch mount may be better because the exhaust can spread out 360 degrees horizontally and weaken faster than if you funnel it in one or two directions through a tube. A simple flat horizontal plate is a surprisingly good blast deflector for an elevated launch mount for a multi-engine rocket. The exhaust ends up going outward in all directions, trending upward over a range of angles vertically, but with little acoustic energy directed upwards enough to threaten the vehicle. Of course, the steel cooling plate needs to ensure that the concrete beneath the rocket isn't eroded, and that's also a concern with flame trench systems. Therefore, if anyone in Boca Chica is concerned about noise or environmental impacts, they can rest assured that SpaceX's ground infrastructure has been tested many times. Of course, addressing environmental concerns will also help the FAA and environmental groups become more amenable to Starship launches in the future, especially after this cooling system successfully endures a complete Starship launch. There's only one month left until the next Starship flight, and we're looking forward to this exciting event. And that's it for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments section down below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos like this for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.